and Climate Intelligence Unit joins me now. And Matt, the harsh reality is that the dry conditions will exacerbate the cost of living crisis. Just give us an idea of just how bad things could get. What do consumers have to look forward to? Yeah, you're right that the um, drought and the dry weather that we're experiencing are connected to the cost of living crisis. And the best way to protect families from higher bills and farmers from some of the uh, effects on crops and livestock that we've just seen in your package there is to achieve net zero and to limit climate change as much, as much as possible. So we know that dealing with droughts when they happen, rather than helping the water system to adapt to future droughts, would cost an extra £20 billion between now and 2050. And you can expect that any extra cost like that would be passed on through water bills. And the worse climate change gets, the bigger that extra cost will be. Secondly, we've just heard about food. Um, it's worth remembering that in the 1976 drought, food prices went up 12% as about £500 million worth of crops failed. And we know that food prices are already very high without the impacts of this dry weather and drought really having taken effect yet. And then finally, you've also been covering energy bills. And it's worth saying that very expensive fossil fuel power like gas plants, which is this winter adding £2,500 to people's energy bills, is also very water hungry. So replacing fossil fuels with renewables like wind and solar that are about four times cheaper, not only brings down, down people's energy bills, but also helps to make the energy system more resilient to future droughts as well. And it's interesting that you mentioned 1976 because farmers were really affected and food prices increased by about 12%. It's a significant amount. It is a significant amount and food prices have already internationally hit record highs this year and have risen significantly in the UK. The government's drought warning and declaration that came on Friday made some comments on the potential impacts on agriculture. The impacts on agriculture were one of the reasons it decided to declare a drought, but it also said that it expects, or the farming industry expects, that up to half of the potato crop could be lost that big proportions, anywhere from 10 to 50% of other vegetables could be affected. Um, and farmers are also struggling to plant crops like oilseed rape that would be harvested next year. So the effects of this drought, which could last for another few months, may be seen many months into next year as well when it comes to food prices and food supply. And it's important to remember as well, you've been covering fires and this isn't just a UK drought. We're seeing huge effects across Western Europe, massive wildfires in France. And we've seen droughts and dry conditions in India, Pakistan, Pakistan and China earlier this year. This is a global problem. And for a country like the UK, which imports around half its food, this shows why it's crucial for us to tackle climate change, not just at home, but in collaboration with international partners as well at meetings like COP27, the UN Climate Conference later this year. And um, Matt, you mentioned um, net zero earlier. So let's just explore that a little bit more. What commitments then would you like to see the two Tory candidates for PM commit to net zero? Are you worried about their plans for climate change? Well, I, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the um, leadership debate. We know that the Conservative government that's uh, in power at the moment stood on a manifesto to deliver net zero by 2050. Um, and progress towards that is already being rolled out across a range of sectors, including the farming sector, which um, will be crucial for helping farmers to um, manage the land in a way that stores more carbon, cuts their emissions and stores more water as well. When it comes to the water system specifically, there are some simple steps that government and industry can take. So we know that at the moment, only about half of households have water meters, but water meters make a huge difference and can reduce usage by about 15%, um, bringing down people's bills, but also conserving water in times of scarcity. Um, water companies are being encouraged, to say the least, to do more to tackle leaks. At the moment, around 3 billion litres of water per day is lost to those leaks. That's equivalent to around 20% of what's used every day. And that's important to bear in mind that by 2050, we'll need around 4 billion litres extra. So tackling those leaks is crucial. And then finally, there might be new infrastructure like reservoirs, um, in order to help us cope with times of dry weather and drought. But it's also important, again, as your package referred to, to think about other solutions like restoring wetlands, which can be up to 40% cheaper than hard infrastructure like reservoirs. And they can have other benefits too, like storing carbon and benefiting wildlife. So think of reed beds, think of peatlands, um, which also help to filter water and improve its quality. But as I say, the best way to limit future droughts, to protect the farming industry and to protect families from higher bills is to get to net zero as quickly as possible. Thank you very much indeed. Great to get your thoughts there, Matt Williams from the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit.